verse 13 to 27. If you see, can you read together? One, two, three. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as a judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning to evening. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit at church while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instruction. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourself out. The work is too heavy for you, and you cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me. I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God and bring their dispute to Him. Teach them His decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. But select the capable man from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate and dishonest gain. And they appointed them as your officials of a thousand and hundred and fifties and tens. Let them serve as a judge for the people at all times. But let them bring every difficult case to you. The simple case you can decide themselves. And that will make your Lord a writer. Because they will share it with you, if you do this God's so command, you will be able to stand the strain. And all these people will go home satisfied. And Moses listened to his father in Rome and did everything he said. He chose the capable man from all his life and men then and leaders of the people, officials of a thousand, hundred and fifties and tens. They surveyed the judges for the people at all times. The difficult case they brought to Moses, but the simple one they decided to themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way, and the Jethro returned to his own country. Father, you can speak to us. You made heaven and earth. When you said, let there be light, there was light. Can you recreate us by your word and change us? We become like Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This afternoon, I would like to share with you, do you understand, do you know the the power of a cell group, yeah? How many of you understand the cell group? Have you heard about cell group? You know, this cell group idea coming from Moses. How many years ago this idea come from? How many years ago? 3,500 years ago. The cell group is not new, it's old things. Cell group is the form of the church organization is used in many church, many churches actually. And then, um, you know, cell group is the one to teaching the Bible and prayer meeting and have a fellowship, these uh, cell groups. You know, we have a cell in our body. If you have the cell, cell is uh, uh, full of life. Because of full of life, if you have a cell, will grow and multiply, yeah? Have you, have you heard about the pastor Paul yong gi yeah. he, he died uh, around two years ago. You know, he had the biggest church in the world. Even still, the Yoido Full Gospel Church is the biggest church in the world. And I met him three, four times, and then he prayed for me. I went to his office, he prayed together. He's a wonderful man of God. Do you know how many cell groups in his church? 50,000. Yeah, yeah. 50,000. <laughs> Can you imagine? 50,000 cell groups in all over South Korea. Do you know how many members? In one single church, over 750,000 members. <laughs> how? 750,000 members come to church on Sunday. Almost impossible. But main auditorium, main hall is a 12,000 seat. But they have so many buildings. In one service, do you know how many people they can have the one service? Around 200,000 people. Because uh, they have so many uh, Buildings. One building is a 15 floor or a 20 floor. One floor is around 3,000 or 4,000 people. They can see the big screen and the worshiping God at the same time. For one floor. 
Yeah. That at the moment is a, a still is a big church in the world is a you know, the full gospel church, almost a million people attendance. The church is the people as well. For it. I know it's good yeah. If they preach the gospel, then it's very yeah. great, it? uh, Just uh, what I want to tell you, that church is uh, very, I don't talk about uh, numbers. You know, most of the church is uh, very interested by ABC. A is, uh, thank you very much. Well done. Well done. You know, to preach the gospel every day is only by the grace of God. Yes. Only by the grace of God. But today I want to talk about the uh, cell group. You know, our church will, will, will open the cell group from 5th of November. Every member of our church will participate in the cell group. I tell you what is the most powerful thing about the cell group. And whole home group or house group, same thing is the cell group. Same things. Do you know Moses, he he leading the how many people? How many people come out from, from the Egypt? How many? Can you guess? Minimum two million, because of those who are over seventy, over twenty years old, seven hundred thousand people. Can you imagine? Need wives and children. At least over two million people, two million people come out from Egypt, and then when the two million people getting together, there's always problem. You know, even you know, I don't know, fifteen, sixteen people stay together with the brothers, sisters in here, they're big trouble. <laughs> They're fighting one another, and then, can you see that my brother is injured because somebody beat him <laughs> by a frying pan? I never expected there's something happening in our church like this. Because whenever people gathering together, there's always a problem. But do you know what happened? People bring the problem to Moses. He, he handled the two million people by himself. It's too much, too much. I would like to share with you, how can you see this great power of a cell group? Can you see the, the, do you know the power of a cell group? I can share with you. Number one, there's a power of a cell group. Number one, do you know what is number one? You don't need to be tired anymore. <laughs> no more tired. Anybody tired? Yeah, now I have good news for you. You don't need to be tired. Look at the verse 13 and 14. Actually, chapter 18, 13 and 14. Can you see it once again? Can we read together? The next day Moses took his seat to serve as a judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning to evening. When his father-in-law saw the, that Moses was doing for people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit at judge? Why all the people standing around you from morning to evening? Who is the best, who is the most tired man among the, according to this scripture? Moses. Moses. And people who are standing. The long queue, over a thousand people queue to see the one man. Everybody tired. Moses must be tired. And people, they want to get the counseling from Moses and they were so tired. Everybody tired. A few months ago, our deacon suggested to me and offer me, Pastor Paul, you're working very hard from morning to evening, and then I can support him for you to during the morning prayer meeting. It's wonderful. And then by the grace of God, our pastor Julio, he is leading the morning prayer meeting, Monday morning and Tuesday morning. And then um, I'm very relaxed actually. On Monday, Tuesday, I'm very free actually. <laughs> can you mean I come here every morning, Monday to Friday? And then evening on Wednesday, Friday, I, I come here. But thanks be to God, uh, Pastor Julio, he, he leading the meeting on Monday morning and Tuesday morning. And then, you know why UK church is damaged? Many, many churches in UK decline. Church of England decline, decline. Salvation Army, Baptist Church, most of churches decline. Why? What is the main reason? Why? Tired. Yeah, tired. <laughs> They don't have a service. When they have a service, only within one hour. But do you know how many hours we we, have, we worship the Lord? Around the three hours in here on Sunday. Joshua, just to let you know, you come here first time, we have a service like African church. Three hours. <laughs> three hours, we're singing and worshiping God, glorify God. Three hours. 
And uh, most of church in Church of England, uh, preach, uh, preaching only 20 minutes. Sometimes 50 minutes. Within one hour, finish. Therefore, they don't need a building. Do you understand? And God spoke to me very clearly. Churches in UK, they don't have a service properly. Therefore, you can have a service in the morning and evening. God spoke to me very clearly. I said, yes, I will do it. And then we have a service every morning and evening, every day. For how long? Last 27 years we did it, all the times. Why? God spoke to me. If there is no service, there is no worship, there is no prayer meeting, you need to do it. You have to do it. God spoke to me. I said, yes, Lord, I will do it. I just obey. I just obey. Yeah. And thanks be to God. Because of uh, like the, some people, I, I, I don't need to do everything by myself. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> two brothers, and brothers, one Korean man, one English man, they're working together to arrange our church. Do you know who are the church, church keepers? You don't know that? <laughs> Stuart. Over there. And Kim, can you give the big love for these two brothers? <laughs> They're working very hard. And they arranged all the chairs and the kitchen and toilet. They're doing very well. Thanks be to God. Amen. You know, I used to ask the brothers, sisters, can you arrange the kitchen? Can you clean the toilet? Can you do these things? I was so tired. But now I don't need to say these things. Do you know who? These two brothers, they're doing very well. It's not wonderful. They are the ones who are responsible to do it. I'm so glad. Do you know this man Moses, he listened what his father-in-law said, Jethro. Jethro spoke to him, you're working very hard from morning to evening. You need to do something like this. Choose the leaders of a thousand, hundred, fifties, and tens. He just obey. He just do it. You know, if you're doing by yourself, it's a very tired. Sometimes, you know, you know, not very happy. Sometimes, two times. But I have a good news for you. When you're working together with some brothers, sisters, you are very excited. Yeah, so easy. You're so happy. You know, when I announced it uh, a few days ago, uh, three days ago, we're gonna have an outreach in uh, Kingston. Do you know how many people came? Over 25 people come. 25 people come and gathering together. Do you know how many souls came to Lord Jesus yesterday? 28. Hallelujah. You're not exciting? <laughs> <laughs> 28 souls come to Lord Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. You know, I used to preaching by myself. Nobody come. When I ask people, can you come and have outreach? They say, oh, I'm very busy. Do I have an appointment blah, blah, like this? But in these days, thanks be to God who knows me, and they're willing to join. They're willing to pay the price. One day you'll go to heaven. When you go to heaven, God will ask you, what did you do on earth? You may say, I, work, I was working very hard for my children, for my family, in the office or in the workplace. But God wants to listen to this kind of message. Dear Lord, only by your grace, I preach the gospel daily. Many souls came to Lord Jesus. And God will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. 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 This is a message for you and me. You know, when you're doing something, how many of you are doing something with a joyful heart? Yeah, you have to do it joyful heart, exciting heart, yeah? gladly. How many, how many uh, brother here, you are worship leader, did you sing in your worshiping God with a joyful heart or because of your duty? From your heart. Joyfully, gladly, willingly. Yeah. You know, this is uh, your, uh, your heart. Every one of you. When you work in your work, workplace, or oh, because of I must make money, therefore I must do it, I have to do it. <laughs> so tired. <laughs> How many of you you working in your workplace uh, joyfully, gladly? Only half. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you, you know, how many of you students in here? Yes. Did you enjoy the study? 
How about you? <laughs> oh, my parents are paying the school fees, therefore I need to go to school and study. No, you have to study joyfully. Amen. Yeah. Yes, still on. Yeah, joyfully. Yes. Bible is still on. Yes. Yeah, you have to do it. Everything joyfully. Can you high five one another? Whatever you do, it do it with a joyful heart. Say to each other, whatever you do, it do it with a joyful heart. Joyful heart. Yeah. Moses, he was working very hard from morning to evening. Yeah. Look at Exodus chapter eighteen, verse seventeen and eighteen. Can you read together? Exodus seventeen and eighteen, one to three. Moses, the father-in-law, replied, "What you are doing is not good." You and these people who come to you will only wear yourself out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. We need each other. I need you. You need me. Yeah. Don't tell me or oh, leave me alone. I can do it. No, no. You need each other. Yeah. You need each other. Supporting for one another. Do you know what Moses' father-in-law say? Do you know what you're doing? Is not good. You're working very hard, but you are doing is not good. Don't do it. Yeah. When you live in this world, don't be tired in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't be weary in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, "Come unto me, who has got to wear and burden? I will give you rest." Yeah. Weary and tired, and no more yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say, teacher, teacher, don't be tired anymore in Jesus' name. Say this, don't be tired in Jesus' name anymore. No more, no more tired. Amen. Yeah. Some people say, oh, let's open their, my, their mouth. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Don't talk to these people. <laughs> when I say to, you know, I met many of my friends, some English friends, and uh, how are you? And you are shaking each other. How are you? So, I'm just surviving. <laughs> I don't like that kind of way. <laughs> you live an abundant life in Jesus' name, amen? Not just surviving, more than conqueror, amen? amen? You can enjoy this life because of Jesus, amen? amen? How many of you enjoy the goodness of God in this land? Amen. If you don't enjoy the goodness of the Lord, time to repent. Sorry, Father, I don't know why I don't enjoy the goodness of you. Almighty God in this land. You can enjoy it. I have good news for you. Don't be tired from now on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The tiredness, no more your word anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. No more tired. Because of a cash your burden onto Jesus. He will care for you. Long, long time ago, I saw the oil lamp. Do you know oil lamp? Yeah. Oil lamp inside oil. And uh, in the middle is a wick, wick. And if you don't put the enough oil, what's going to happen? The wick burn, and then, then, then the fire gone. Unfortunately, many, many born-again Christians, they don't have the oil. And then, do you know what happens? When they don't have oil, they're working very hard by their own ability, by their own skills, they by their own their effort. That is why they are knocked down, they burn out, and then their life finish. But I have good news for you. What is good news? You have to have the full of oil in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the oil burning. Amen. Not weak burning. Oil. Oil of the Lord. For me, only by the grace of God, you know, some people say that, Pastor Paul, you're working very hard. I'm not working very hard. I just enjoy, actually. I enjoy it. Who, who was working very hard in me? Who? Jesus. Jesus! I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Can you imagine? Jesus lives inside of me. Jesus is working very hard in me. In me. And I can see how Jesus works in my life. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Therefore, please, uh, you can keep the enough oil inside of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. What does mean of oil? You have the full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You must have the full of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have a full of the Holy Spirit, you are burn out and you know, you know, you, you are weak, weak, burning, and died. Let the Holy Spirit dwell inside of you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So important. 
Do you remember ten virgins waiting for the bridegroom? But how many virgins are prepared the oil? Five. Only five. Five of them they don't prepare. But same same things. In the last day, yeah, Jesus will come Jesus will come back very, very soon. Before Jesus Christ comes back soon, you must prepare. What kind of preparation? Oil. Oil. Oil of the Holy Spirit. Oil of God. Can you say to each other, you must have a full of oil of God in Jesus' name. Say to each other, you must have a full of oil of God. Full of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the full of the Holy Spirit, your life is difficult and hard. Yeah. Moses, he was working very hard. But he delegated all the people. Leaders of thousand, hundred, fifties, and tens. And then his life so relaxed. He enjoyed Wonderful life. Anybody knows the former president of America? He was an actor. And he's a Reagan. You come from America. <laughs> Reagan was a wonderful man. Do you know why I say wonderful man? He was an actor. But do you know what is his gift? He knows how to use the people. <laughs> he selected the right people in the right place, right position in, in America. That is why when you was a president of America, the most powerful country in the United States of America, that is wonderful because of like Moses, he selected the right man, the leader of a thousand, leader of a hundred, leader of fifties and tens. No, 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 Reagan he, he did. You don't need to tie it anymore. You can select some right man, right people working together with you. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 say, Proverbs 27 verse 17, can you read together? And iron, sharpen, iron. So one person sharpen, another. In the last day, you need the right people surround you. Yeah? If you have the right people around you, you'll be very blessed. Look at Exodus chapter 18 verse 24. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he did, he said. Yeah? His life is amazing, abundant life, Mr. Moses. And uh, when you see some difficult issues, he can deal with. But he the issues, uh, the leader of a thousand and hundred and uh, fifties and ten, they are the ones to uh, working for these people. He is no more tired anymore. And then he can do it for long, his missions. You know, when you do something, not just do it for a while and then it's finished. No, no. You have to do it continuously, continuously. Two people, powerful. Even three people, more powerful. Look at the Ecclesiastes. You know, Ecclesiastes is uh, written by the King Solomon. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. Can you read together? Through one may be overpowered, and two can defend themselves. And cord of three stand is not quickly broken. Can you see that? One may be overpowered, it's well done, powerful. But two can defend themselves. Most more powerful. A cord of three stand not be not quickly broken. We have to work in together. Working together. Can you say to each other, we need each other, say to each other, we need each other, we need each other. We have to pray for each other. Suffering for one another. So blessed. When you have somebody working together with you, how wonderful, how blessed, yeah? You're not tired when you're working together, yeah? How many experience when you're working together with some people, you know, not easily tired? Anybody experience it? Eh? If you're singing by yourself, you're tired. <laughs> you can sing 10 minutes, oh, I'm so sorry, I can't. <laughs> but we're singing together with the brothers, sisters, with the other musicians, so powerful. There's a power. Do you know the, the power of a cell group? Number two, your life improve. Your life improve. What does mean your life improve? God using you. How many want to use him by God? You want to use him by God? How wonderful. When you become a born again Christian, pray to your Lord. Father God, can you use me? Use me. Use me, Lord. And there's a uh, many microphone. I don't know, seven, eight microphone. This is the most popular because all the time you see, 
Oh God, can you use me? Use me for your glory. And look at Exodus chapter 18, verse 25 and 26. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of a people, officials of a thousand and hundred and fifty sentences. They serve as a judge for the people at all times. The difficult case that they brought to Moses, but the simple one, they decide themselves. Do you know what happened? Moses chose to these leaders to make them what? Become a responsible person. Responsible. If you become a responsible person, it's a great blessing. You know, Moses, he chose to these leaders, give them some job to do it. Wonderful. Is a blessing or not blessing when you receive some responsible job? Is good or bad? You don't understand? <laughs> if you receive some responsible job, is it good or bad? So blessed, so good. Some people, so lazy man, don't give me job. No, no. <laughs> Leave me alone. That kind of people, terrible. When you become a father, you have a responsibility to look, and look after your children. Become wife and husband is a responsible position. To be a student, also responsible. To be a teacher, responsible. And to be a deacon, to be a responsible. To be a worship leader and pianist, drummer, guitarist, is a responsible job. Everybody must have some responsible job. Otherwise, your life is ruined. Your life is not, not good, actually. Do you know when Jesus selected the 12 disciples, do you know what Jesus selected? Jesus didn't select the homeless. Jesus didn't select the beggar. He selected the professional man. Do you understand? Listen carefully. Jesus selected Peter. He was a professional man, fishers of man. He has got his own boat, rich man actually. Even now, if you have the boat in somewhere, you are quite rich man. Peter was a, like a multi-millionaire. He left everything he followed Jesus. Do you understand? Jesus called on not um, un 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 unemployed people. Jesus selected a very rich man. Very rich man. Not just rich man. Do you remember? Jesus speak about three kind of people. One is the five talent. One is a, another guy, two talent. One is one talent. One guy, he digging, who is one talent, put under the ground. And the master come. Where is the uh, fruit? Where is the, you know, you know the, uh, the, uh, uh, some extra you know, profit? Show me the profit. One guy who is a five talent. Here you are. I have another five talent. I have total ten. Do you know what Jesus say? Master say, well done, good and faithful servant. Another guy who received the two talent, he made another two more and four talent. Master say, you, well done, good and faithful servant. Another guy, what he did? He digging, put under the ground. Here you are, you gave me one, here you are, he's one. What master say? Two things, two words. What, he, what the master say? He said, actually, Jesus. What did Jesus say? You wicked and lazy. Wicked man, lazy man. Lazy man, wicked man. You know, in our church, I'm the professional man, professional man to kick out the lazy spirit. Anybody want to work together with me, you cannot be lazy anymore. Can you say to each other, kicking out the wicked and lazy spirit, say to each other, kicking out the wicked and lazy spirit in Jesus' name, amen? Jesus said, you wicked and lazy servant, give me. If I know you put your one talent under the ground, I can put it in the bank. I can make it some, some interest. You wicked, lazy servant, kick him out. One guy, he, you know, he was a drug addict and alcoholic for 25 years. And he stopped to all these things. Almost over one year, one and a half year, he started a new life. And then I went to Poland and Germany uh, with him and our team. How many went to Poland and Germany? And uh, he has got a uh, driver's license. I told him, 
brother, and then now you have license, you want to drive on this car, I want to drive another car. And he agreed. And I told him, listen to me, you used to be a not responsible person. 25 years, you uh, know, whenever he wake up and hungry and eating. And then he couldn't look at his two children. That is why, do you know that in this day, social workers are taking their children from the family if they are father and mother, no responsible person. And they lose the two children. Of course, uh, there's a grandfather and mother, you know, by the grace, the grace of God, look at the children. You know, I told him very clearly, now you are a driver. You are a responsible person. Can you drive it carefully? And he said, yes, pray for me. He said, I do my best. And then, then people, they, you know, our group, you, how many? You are 12, yeah? 12 people, some people, I, uh, some people, they don't want to come to, come to his car because they don't want to go to heaven uh, <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> He agreed with me. He said to me very clearly, Pastor, for 25 years, last 25 years, I never be a responsible person. But it's the first time in my life I drive the car. I'm a responsible person. He appreciate. Can I encourage you? That man, he never be a responsible person. And then I gave him some job to do it. And training him to be a responsible person. You know, same thing. God wants to train you to become a responsible brothers and sisters in the eyes of the law. It's a good news for you. Can you say to each other, in the name of Lord Jesus, you are a responsible person in Jesus' name. Say to each other, in the name of Jesus, you are a responsible person in Jesus' name. Amen. Be responsible. Yeah. Do you know, I, I counseling so many people. Do you know who, who is the main person to have the depression? Yes. Who are the one to get the depression and oppression? Lazy, Lazy man. Who hasn't got the job? Do you they understand? The they have the plenty of time. Battle, yes. They have the plenty of time. What they do? Think of some other things and they have the depression. Therefore, if you, if you feel you have a depression, come to me. I'll give you a very hard job for you. <laughs> I can, I can give you 1,000 leaflet, you can put the leaflet in one hour, in the, some street. <laughs> Good for them. Do you know, I know how to kick out the depression. How many of you agree? You've never seen the depression people? Who has seen the job? Too much time. They don't need to work. Because somebody provides for them. Do you understand? They waste their life. That is why people, they stay in the darkness and they have depression. But Moses, he was working very hard, but now he knows he gave them a job. One man, charge of 1,000. You are a charge of 100, charge of 50s and 10s. He knows. Can you look at the uh, Exodus chapter 18, verse 21? Can you read together? But select a capable man from all the people, man who fear God. Trust a worthy man who had a dishonest gain and appointed them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Can you see the three kind of people become uh, leaders? Who are they? Number one? Fear God. Who is number two? Trustworthy. Number three? Hate, dishonest gain. Do you know who are the dishonest gain? They are the fruit of the people. Cheater, deceiver. <coughs> Have you seen that? Some people cheating by internet, by porn, terrible. This kind of hate, this kind of dishonest gain. But you must hate this kind of people, this kind of you know, behavior. But three kind of people fear God, trustworthy. Yeah? Fear the law. It's the beginning of wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. If you remember, fear God. And uh, you are a man of trustworthy, and then hate uh, this one, uh, this one is the gain, and then God is using you. Look at the Genesis chapter twenty-two, verse twelve. 
Genesis chapter 22 verse 12 is a very important scripture. Why? Because God, God tests Abraham. What kind of test? God tests Abraham. You fear God or not? Can you read together? Do not lay a hand on the boy. He said, do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham <coughs> test the test, which is a fear God. Are you the one to fear God? or not. If you fear God, you will obey God. Yeah? You will obey God. Abraham obey God. Do you think this is a, is a common sense? God asked Abraham, bring your son Isaac. Kill him and he burn for prey. Can you believe that? Can you agree with God? So hard. Most of people, yeah, they have their own idea, their own knowledge, their own emotion, their own will, they disobey. Even they know the voice of God. But this man, Abraham, different. Abraham, he knows the voice of God because he fear God. God said, now I know that you fear me because you try to kill your son. Actually, he's almost killed him, actually. Don't kill him. God said, you fear God. You, Abraham, fear God. Therefore, he passed the test. You know, Satan tempt you. Temptation comes from Satan. The test comes from Almighty God. Sometime, two times, God tests you. What kind of test? You fear God or not? Yeah? Fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Fear God. Fear God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. You know, God speaks to us about the duty of all mankind. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Can you read it together? Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is what? Duty of all mankind. What is the duty of you? Fear God and obey his commandment. Can you high five one another? Fear God and obey his commandment. This is your duty, say each other. Fear God. Obey his Commitment. It's a duty. Your duty. Amen. What is duty? Duty must you must do it. There's no optional. You must do it. Fear God. Obey his commandment. So important to fear God. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 say, Fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? This time. And knowledge of a holy one is understanding. Through the cell group, yeah, you need to fear God. When you fear God, you'll obey what God say. You know, say good leader. How many say good leader? Can you lift up hand? I only the deacons, all the deacons. Deacon Nadia over there, yeah, and all the deacons, they are the say good leaders. So you need to working together with me, yeah? Say good leaders, supporting for your cell members. We're going to open the cell group on the 5th of November. But from now on, do you remember your cell members, yeah? You need to pray for them daily. Pray for them daily. You know, you have a responsibility of now to pray for your cell members. When you're gathering together, I believe there are two cell meeting in here, one in here, one over there. And one in the church office, one in the Shoparo, two is on the uh, two is in the in the classroom also. At least uh, like the six. Six cell meeting from first Sunday of November. When you're gathering together, Say leader, you need to ask them, what is your inspiration to the message today? You can ask them and they can share. They can share. And then ask them, how can you take this word of God in your practical life? Another word, how can you obey? How can you obey? How can you obey? If God, the Bible said, the word of God said, be holy because I'm holy. How can you live in your holy life? Anything is, uh, you know, there's some secret, is, secret things, secret sin, you need to cut it up. Can you say amen? amen. Can you high five one another? Cut up your secret sins in Jesus' name. Say to you, cut up your secret sins in Jesus' name. Only God and you knows, nobody knows, only two. God and you knows that sin, cut it up in Jesus' name. Amen? So important. And then, say group leader, ask them. What is your prayer request? Can you share with me? Can you tell me what is your prayer request? And then you can pray for one another. 
Yeah? He's a responsible man. It's so important. Are you a responsible man and woman of God? If you don't have any responsible job, today is a time to receive the responsible job in Jesus' name. Amen? You know, you don't just come here and go back to your home on Sunday to be a responsible brother, sisters. You come here to practice, yeah, to early, yeah, to play the, and then I think worship team come here two times, eh? two times, of, you know, before you guys come, worship team come here, practice, two times, on Thursday and then you are Saturday, two times of practice, can you imagine, which means they are responsible. They are full-time student. They have a full-time job or some busy man. But because of they have some duty, they have some responsible job and do it. Yeah? So important. Moses, he dedicated some, some people. They have some job to do it. Yeah? This cell group is not from the somewhere. They come from the, the Bible, from Old Testament. This cell group model is every church is also using this cell group you know, the system. Even in the company. Even used to work in JP Morgan, they're using it. The same. Yeah? JP Morgan and then every company actually. Every school also. Every organization they have this kind of cell group models. This model come from the Bible. Bible. Finally, do you know the power of cell group. Number three, you need to understand the fellowship of a saint. Fellowship of a saint. Yeah. Fellowship of a saint is so important. Early church have an amazing fellowship. Amazing fellowship. Amazing fellowship. And I think last month I announced it. Anybody come to my house and have a dinner? Do you know how many people came? 26. <laughs> 26 people came gathering together in my house and eating together. Anybody want to have a noodle tonight in my house? Come to my house, eh? Feel free after the service. Come, okay, okay. Two people lift up hand, you can come to me and then I'll... Yeah? Okay, no, three, you can come tonight, okay. Uh, the, I especially, because I, I prayed to God, God came desire, how can I invite uh, this beautiful, our deacon, deaconess, and he, her daughter, and I did tonight, you can come. You can come with uh, some brother, sister, come, and they have a uh, fellowship together. When I announced it, do you know, 26 people came, my house is very, not very big, small house. 26, <laughs> so many. And then I told our, our 26 people, uh, if we do not, work, do not eat. You need to come with me. I gave the leaflet. <laughs> we visited over a thousand houses. Uh, people, they have uh, lunch. Tonight, we need to do something before you eat. And do the, just to let you know. <laughs> do you understand? I'm a very uh, hard man <laughs> to give a good job. Good job. To preach the gospel is good or bad? Good. Good news. Early church have a fellowship. They're eating together, eating together, fellowship together. They pray together, listen to the word of God together. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 42 and 43. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, 43. Can you read together? They devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with the awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. Can you see the teaching? Teaching is the word of God. Fellowship. Yes. To breaking bread, eating together. And prayer. Amen. Wonderful fellowship. There's a great revival in early church. Anybody know the population of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago? How many? 80,000. 80? 80, 80,000. 80, 80, 80,000 population of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. Guess how many people believe in Jesus? 40,000, 50%. Do you know 50% that believe in the Lord Jesus in the, some city is a great miracle. It's a revival yeah. city. Yes. I was in the Punjab area near the border of Pakistan and then India. When I went there, one pastor asked me, guess how many percent of the people in this area born again? I, said, I don't know, because in India, in Hindu country, 
maybe 10 percent, maybe 15. Do you know what he say? This pastor say to me, 95 percent of people in this area are born again. Wow. 95 percent. I never, never know. And I said, how many population in, in this area? He said, 4,000. Can you count? 45, 4, 95% of 4,000. How many people believe in Jesus? 3,000. 3,000, like 800. <laughs> you know what pastor say? If you're working and if you say hallelujah, and if somebody is here and they say amen <laughs> in that area. <laughs> Very nice area. It's a amazing revival area. But in early church, there's a revival because of fellowship of a saint. Eating together, praying together. They saw the miracles, the signs and wonders. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 46 and 47. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with a glad and sincere heart. Praising God and enjoy the favor of all the people. And the Lord added their number daily, those who are being saved. In the early church, what did they do? They eating together and fellowship together and praising God. And then they saw the enjoy. They saw the favor of the Lord in their life. Isn't that wonderful? Yesterday, you know, because of Un Chan came to our church and then, okay, let's have a Korean barbecue. Some gifts are, and then around the 15 people eat. How many we ate last night? Around 15 people enjoyed the, uh, uh, the food last night. It's a fellowship. I talk about the fellowship. When you have a fellowship, people open their heart and then receive Jesus. So many people, they don't have a proper fellowship in these days. So many people, are, they are lonely. Anybody lonely? Let me know. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> in, in this day, so many people lonely in, in the whole of the world. In the last day, you know, they don't have a, they don't have a friend. They ju they they just uh, using the YouTube. They use the SNS. Only computer, only screen, tablet, mobile phone. They don't talk to each other in these days. So many people are lonely. And then, you know, people, people saw the, my mobile number on the back of the leaflet. People call me. Sometimes over 10, 10 phone calls per day. I, 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 yesterday, somebody called me, where do you live? And the lady, they, this lady said, I live in England. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are living in England, but where about in England? So strange people. <laughs> and she speak about, oh, I have a depression, oh, all kinds of things. I told her, I'm going to pray for you, but I think you can call the 999. Call the ambulance. <laughs> when I told her, call the ambulance, she was upset. I hang up. <laughs> she called me again. <laughs> I was so bit out driving, and I said to Deacon, Deacon Leah, you can talk to the, and then she pray for her and talk to you there. Why people, they call me? Yes. They express I'm lonely. You can talk with me. That can they express. So many. Some people say to me, Pastor Paul, don't put your mobile phone on the leaflet. And because of people, they disturbing you and attack you, whatever. You know, I don't mind. You know, let people call me. When some people call me and then sometimes I say to the people, shut your mouth and listen to me. <laughs> and I preach the gospel. Some Muslims, some strange these people, I don't need to listen to them. I just preach the gospel. In the last day, people looking for love, they are lonely. We were using the cell group. You know, you need to contact with them and support for them, pray for them. Yeah? Of course, you can call me anytime, at midnight, you can call me anytime. But at the same time, you can talk to either your cell leader in Jesus' name. Amen? Cell group leader, we need to support it for you. Yeah? But we're going to announce it again and again and again. Any newcomers will come to my group and I can talk to them about our church, about our, my life, and share my testimony also. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 26 and 27. 
1 Corinthians 12, 26 and 27. Can you read together? If one part suffer, every part suffer with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each of you is part of you. Do you understand? If this finger, if this finger pain, you cannot say to this finger, I'm not going to cut and be sent to hospital, no. Because of this finger, every part of my body, left leg, right leg, and all my body go to the hospital together. Because of this finger. I don't need you. Cut. No, you can't say that. Body of Christ, same like this. If somebody, you know, honor, then one part is honor. What does the Bible say? Every part rejoice with it. Amen. Can you say to each other, your pain is my pain. Your joy is my joy. Say to each other, your pain is my pain. Your joy is my joy. Amen. This is our heart. You are family in Christ Jesus. One body. Yeah. Jesus is the head of the church and we are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. When Brother Patrick is in hospital around three weeks ago, oh, I could not sleep because I knew him for 27 years. 27 years he working together with me and my brother. I was prayer and prayer and prayer. Why is my family? He's my brother. Look at the Romans chapter 12, verse 15, saying, Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Through the same room, you can rejoice together. If somebody is suffering, you can suffer for their brothers and sisters. Every one of you, including me, need encouragement. How many of you need encouragement? We need encouragement. Of course, the Holy Spirit is encourager. The Holy Spirit used the man and woman of God to encourage you. Do you know when God bless you? Do you know how God bless you? Jesus not come down in front of you, I'm going to bless you. No, no. God bless you through people. Can you say amen? amen. God bless you through the people. Amen, Jesus. Sister Michelle, you stay with your sister's, your sister, sister's house. Yeah? God bless you through your sister. Did you know that? In the beginning, you plan to stay in our church for a while, but uh, more blessed actually, more better. Stay together with your sister and pray together. Amen. When God bless, God bless somebody. God bless somebody through someone. Mm -hmm. This is a principle. Therefore, if you want to receive this kind of blessing, sow in the seed for others. Do to others and you to receive some good things. I also pray to the Lord. If you will, you can upgrade my car because of people coming, even stay in my house, some families, five. Five people sit in my car, including me six. It's one baby, is uncomfortable. Oh Lord, I think that you can help me to upgrade my car, seven seat car. Can you help me? I was praying. Somebody is going to see it continually. On 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds, continually. Somebody gave me money. And oh God, thank you, this, uh, this is a sign to upgrade my car. Did you see the, my new car over there? <laughs> yeah. yeah? Did you happy about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. First of all, you have a car, I don't have a car, I come to church by bus. <laughs> oh. If you're painful, you need to repent your sins. <laughs> Do you understand? Have a busy life. Do you understand? Your joy is my joy. I will need to help you. Do you understand? We pray together. This is a family. This is a fellowship of a saint. You know, some of our members cry, and then it's my pain. Somebody has passed apart. I don't have no money to get the bus to come to church. Uh, let me help you. I put some, some credit for the oyster card by the grace of God. Do you know we have to support for one another? Fellowship of a saint. God will to bless you through somebody. Do you know that? Can you say to each other, God will to bless you through somebody. Say to each other, God will bless you through somebody. This is a principle. It's a universal principle. Yeah? God will to, therefore, you have to have a fellowship. Through the fellowship of a saint, you receive a blessing. Do you know that? 1 John chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. 1 John 4, 11 and 12. Can you read together? Dear friend, since God so loved us, 
we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if you love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete in us. Love one another. When you love one another, God lives in the midst of us. God lives in us if you love one another. Can you love one another? <coughs> Surely, let us love one another. Pray for one another. Suffering for one another. You know, I met a brother here last week. Holy Spirit touched him. He couldn't sleep properly because I told him, brother, you need to start a new life. Help him. Pray for him. You know, his wife pray all the times. Now, your job to pray for him. Pray together. Remember this power of a cell group. Number one, never tired from now on because you're working together. Number two, you will use him by God. You become a responsible person. And the deacons and leaders and then you know, you are members of a cell group, yeah? And then you are not just a member. You can do something for others, suffering for cell group leaders, bless others. Finally, fellowship of saints. Through the fellowship of saints, God release the love of God. Through the fellowship of saints, yeah, you receive the love of God. Can you say amen? amen. Can you stand up? From now on, you led by the Holy Spirit, no more tired from now on. From now on, you have a responsible job to serving Jesus from now on. Yeah? From now on, you have a fellowship of saints. You bless one another. Can you lift up your holy hand? Lift up a holy hand and pray together. Just one minute, you can pray together. In the name of the Lord Jesus and Nazareth. Father, we thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we led by the Holy Spirit, no more led by the flesh, led by the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Nazareth, we are no more tired, cast our burden unto Jesus. Jesus said to us, come unto me, where you get to wear and burden, I will give you rest. You can get rest and peace and joy through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We have this responsible job to do something for your glory. Jesus, we love you. We magnify your name. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus and Nazareth, we kick it out the late and the wicked spirit in Jesus' name from our life. Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Lord Jesus and Nazareth, we have a many fellowship of saints. Lord, we thank you. Can you touch your heart? I can pray for you. If you never ever tired, spiritually, physically, you can touch your heart. If you want to be a powerful man and woman of God, who is a responsible person, you can touch your heart. If you have the proper fellowship of a saint, proper relationship with Jesus, and relationship with the brothers and sisters, no more lonely, no more isolate, you can touch your heart. Also, if you have any pain in your body, can you touch your sick part of your body? I can pray for you. You receive the prayer now by faith. Faith alone, God wants to do something for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, Father, I pray for your children. Some of your children, their body is not well, painful. They have some sickness and disease. Even including the brother Patrick was in the hospital. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus and Nazareth, your sickness, I command you, go away from our body in Jesus' name. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus was wounded. We are healed in Jesus' name. By the blood of Lord Jesus, we are healed in Jesus' name. Father, God, heal us completely by your blood. Jesus, thank you for your divine strength. Joy of the Lord is our strength. We rejoice and be glad. Dear Heavenly Father, can you touch us right now? And you know our heart. We cast our burden onto Jesus. And Jesus said to us, if anybody is tired or weary, burden, come to me, I will give you rest. From now on, we never be tired in Jesus' name. Because of Jesus lives inside of us, He took all our tiredness away from us. Jesus, from now on, we are no more wicked and lady servant. We have joy and peace. We will be a faithful servant in Jesus' name. You have, uh, we have a responsible job to glorify your name. 
whatever you do it do it for the glory of God Jesus thank you you have a proper fellowship of a saint oh Lord help us to support him for one another to bless one another help us to glorify your name Jesus you promise with us I never leave you nor forsake you I'll be with you all the days of your life Jesus we thank you for your grace and your mercy you magnify your name Jesus you know how much we love you we're going to open the cell group meeting from 5th of November Lord every members of London Shepherd of the Church they join the cell group and they'll be blessed they never feel lonely or isolated they have a amazing fellowship of a saint every cell leaders they have a wisdom understanding they have the heart of God they're like a, they have the uh, mother's heart to suffer the older cell members they can pray for cell members with the heart, heart of God oh God help us anybody new comers come they can settle easily in our church because of our cell group meeting Lord give us your grace and your mercy Jesus you know how much we love you we love you with all our heart our mind our strength in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth we pray Amen shall we give the big love ring for Lord Jesus bless you in the name of the Lord can you say to each other you are a good and faithful servant say to each other you are a good and faithful servant in Jesus name Amen may we see it Sister Deacon, Deacon is a Tina, can you pray for offering, praise him?